we found out uh, that Schubert, William Schubert, was um, born on February 19th, 1815, and, and we thought, oh, he would have been 200 this year. So we thought, it sounds like a really good time for a celebration. He was actually the organist here for 52 years, and he lived down in the farmhouse uh, as you come up uh, the church road. Uh, he lived there for most of the years when he was here as the organist. But he wasn't only an organist, he was a school teacher, a notary public. When you go over and look at the artifacts over there, you'll see his signature on numerous documents. Any deed from that time period will have his signature. He was a notary public. He was a stone cutter. He was an artist. And make sure you look at the uh, artifacts that are over there. He drew a self-portrait. He was a really great person, not only a good musician and a good teacher, but he helped everybody that he could. He would teach the school some of it, uh, would be free. He had the orchestra he got started and taught, uh, in fact, he taught Greek too. He was not just English and German, he taught Greek. He was very well educated because he went to a university in, in uh, Germany before he came over here. But uh, of course, he's, he was a good musician, but he was good at anything he did and, and, he, and he shared that with everybody. He was also the justice of the peace and the notary and a teacher. So uh, it was interesting to hear how involved in the community that he was in his time. Oh, he loved his he loved his church and he loved his music. Uh, of course, we know, I know nothing firsthand because he died long before I was born and my parents were born. But all that love of music and and uh, the church was passed on at least by our side of the family. Uh, uh, his his son, my grandfather Edwin. Uh, took over for him when he was sick, and he, w he went on for the rest of his life. That was his occupation, uh, musician. Uh, uh, he, he played the violin, which he learned from his father. So when thinking about what his involvement in, as an organist for 52 years means in terms of his community life, uh, it really shows what a centerpiece he was in the community. I think in the 1800s, uh, church life would have been a cornerstone, if not the cornerstone, of community life. And so he really um, was tied into the fabric of everything that had to do with this area. Uh, the, the Schubert family has quite a few uh, names in it because he did have the 16 children, so a lot of the, the the females, of course, married into different families. One of the most familiar family to our church is the Beery family, and Rosa Schubert um, married a, uh, a Beery, and that name is still pretty prevalent in our, um, in our church today. Another family that the, the oldest Schubert, woman, uh, the oldest female, married into was the Bortz family. And again, the Bortzes had I think they had like 13 or 14 children, so of course the Bortz family uh, was, uh, was quite popular in the area. They stayed basically in this area, but also moved up into the northern Lehigh County, a, a lot of them into, um, into that area. So um, there's another branch of the family, uh, one, of the, one of the Schuberts married a Wendling, and uh, that family is still very close to the, the church and in the area. So there were many different branches of the family, um, but, and many of them stayed right here in this area. Rosa Emma Schubert is the last of his 16 children. And I, my father is the last of her eight children. And I'm the only child, so I'm, <laughs> I'm the last of the last of the last probably. But William Schubert and Uriah Beery are both my great grandfathers. So I'm of the opinion I may be the youngest living great-grandchild as opposed to great-great-grandchild um, that I'm aware of at this point. Since Rosa was last of 16, my dad was last of eight, and I'm the only child. So we don't know for sure, but that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And, uh, his first wife, their first daughter was Amelia. And Amelia married my great-grandfather, Edwin Bortz Sr. And uh, they had, uh, we got uh, Edwin Bortz Jr. And 
Junior married uh, Cora, who was my grandmother. So there was, and then my my mother was product of that union, and then uh, my my mother Gertrude had me. So William Schubert was born in 1815 yes. in Germany, and yes. it's only about 100 miles from where yes. Suzanne is living right now. Suzanne's your wife, and right? He, no, my daughter in uh, Berlin. Yes. But anyway, he was born, and he came, as you know, he came over. Right. And, and that's his self-portrait. He he took that one. He was, must have taken that one. He was in Germany. Huh. And that's uh, and and my. So he's so he was your great 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 grandfather. Your great great grandfather. Right. And, right. And we worked on the Schubert Day celebration for a long time. It's been in the works for like well over a year. Or so we've really worked on it um, very hard. And as it gets down to the wire, deep down you think, oh my gosh. I don't know if anybody's going to come today to the celebration, but as I stood outside early in the morning, I, I came so early, I saw the sunrise, um, it, w it was just gorgeous, and then I saw people start to come, and I saw Schubert's rolling in, and it was so just, just heartwarming, and members of our congregation came to support the, uh, the celebration, and it was very heartwarming to see everybody who thought it was important enough to come. And the church has been gracious enough to loan a room in the house to the Township Historical Society. So we've been working to preserve all the artifacts from the area. It's a very old, uh, very old area. The church has been here since, um, actually since it became settled in 1734 so there's a lot of old history a lot of a lot of people have roots here and we're hoping to preserve those memories not only are we interested in preserving the the past but we're also interested in looking ahead to the future we are very interested in getting all of our artifacts cataloged and put onto a new uh, cataloging system into a new software program we're hoping that the Schubert family, but not only the Schubert family, we're hoping that everybody who has roots here in Long Swamp Township will start thinking about the pres preserving their memories. We're operating on a very, very low budget, so of course we're looking for monetary donations, but we're also looking for historical donations. So I'm hoping that this becomes a place where people can, can donate their um, their memories, their artifacts, and hopefully we'll have enough support from the congregation and support from the area to maintain and preserve the artifacts.